And this is Doug Davis with Karanbi Realty, broker in charge here. And on the Ask Doug show, I'm going to talk about buyer protections and safeguards and safe ways to navigate the purchase contract, otherwise known as loopholes for buyers to get out of the contract. But um, there Lots of things for due diligence and ways that you can continue or not continue with contracts. And really nothing for sellers. So kind of the moral of the story here is if you're going to be buying something, really spend some time figuring out if this is what you want. Um, I know people get into contracts and cancel. It's probably somewhere like, 15% of all transactions are canceled by buyers because of cold feet, because they are afraid of their fear of something, uh, and probably nothing to do with the property whatsoever. So, you know, it's interesting, uh, British Commonwealth, uh, and for sure in Australia, they have 10% earnest money, 10% uh, upfront and that money is the sellers the buyers that money back it's non-refundable so if you're buying something you need to make sure that this is what you want otherwise that money's gone so they do it in reverse and i don't know i think it's actually a better way than what we do i think we spend a lot of time and then have to retreat and from a seller's point of view, if a buyer backs out, the, the seller has lost the market push. Uh, people see that it's gone into escrow and then it falls out of escrow. Then they think maybe there's something wrong with the property. Um, there's a host of things that um, are not so good for a seller. And it depends on when in the transaction a buyer cancels on how bad a seller. So if it's near the end, they've made, they've packed maybe, they've, they've hired movers, bought airplane tickets. Uh, oh, oh my gosh, it, it could be really bad. So um, what I'm going to go over here is um, the different clauses in the contract that give a, an opportunity for a buyer to review, approve, or disapprove of their findings, whatever that might be. Um, so let's start. You know, this is applicable probably across the country and maybe other countries. Um, but what I'm going to do is just note the paragraph on our current purchase agreement. So if you're in Hawaii, uh, you, you might recognize these uh, um, but okay, so first one is um, just starting from the top and working down, uh, review of the preliminary title report, that's G2. So a buyer has an opportunity to review the title report, the um, seller has an opportunity to or, or the buyer can cancel. Um, so that's a, a window. And with all of these paragraphs, with all of these clauses in the contract, they have so many days for review, approval, or disapproval. Meaning their loan, and that could go quite far into the uh, contract and then find out something the, the mortgage people found something out that makes you disqualified, uh, a buyer disqualified. Uh, number three, the disclosure statement. Uh, the disclosure statement um, doesn't even have to have anything negative. Uh, a buyer can review, approve or disapprove on any of the items in it. Uh, and that also goes for I-4, the 
uh, for later discovered information because an opportunity for a buyer to review, approve, or disapprove. Number five is a big one. That's J1. That's the uh, general inspections. Most people hire a home inspector and the inspection for $400, $500, $700, something like that. They get the property uh, evaluated by a home inspector and that's roofing and electrical and plumbing and mechanical things, the appliances, and they uh, give a list of things that are broken or dangerous or in need of repair and uh, gives the buyer a review, approve, or disapprove. So that's J1. The sixth thing is uh, K3, and that's the survey. And if encroachments are discovered on the property, the buyer doesn't have to go through with it. Encroachments are fairly common for single family properties. Uh, walls that have moved over the years or walls that were simply built across the third direction. In any case, a buyer, uh, even if, if the things are fixed, the buyer can still cancel the contract. So number seven, M1, that's the documents that go with the property. There's actually documents on every property in Hawaii, houses and, and um, condos. Provide the documentation for single family subdivisions. Um, we only do um, things like CCNRs for houses, but there's uh, maybe 10 different documents for condos, bylaws, house rules, budget, financial statement, um, meetings of the minutes, all that sort of thing. And all of that uh, is subject to the buyer's review, approval, or disapproval. Maybe they're... Um, good at finances and can evaluate the condo's um, budget and maybe managing it properly and, and can wind out of the contract. Um, number eight, uh, N2, that's the rental documents. If the property is, is rented and you have a tenant, uh, the buyer has an opportunity to review all of the um, uh, rental documentation, property management agreements, that sort of thing, and review, approve, or disapprove. And then the last one would be section. Uh, that would be any sort of special clause that uh, uh, one might have put in there, subject to selling a property, buying another property, um, uh, 1031 exchange. Uh, could be any sort of clause that might be put in and may give a buyer an opportunity to review, approve, or disapprove. So that's it. That's eight or nine things, um, loopholes, if you will, or, or ways for a buyer to uh, discern whether they want to continue with the contract or not. Most of these are done up front in the first couple of weeks, and uh, with the exception of the financing contingency, um, and uh, um, then the contracts would go hard. You know, when I started real estate, each contract, and there was the ability to write a binding contract between a buyer and seller. That's no longer true. You no longer can do a binding contract between a buyer and seller without these um, clauses in them. Didn't have them before, and now they do. Some of them, like the disclosure statement, is state mandated, and you cannot uh, delete them. So the buyer will always have a way out with the disclosure, because that's a state law that requires uh, a disclosure from the seller. No way around that. So there you go. Um, Hope that would be of some help for you in understanding uh, maybe both sides of the transaction and, and uh, go in with your eyes wide open knowing that all of these clauses are available to a, 
uh, both sides to understand uh, how the transaction might happen. And uh, that's about it. And should you have any questions, ask Doug. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much.